Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this video we're going to look at the things that are specific to Revolut joints. Um, for example, limits is probably the main thing. And as we saw in the video just before, uh, to add a joint to the scene we need to select the two bodies in order, A and then B, that the joint should connect. And we also use the cursor position, the little red and white circle here, and we can put that somewhere. I'll just put it right in the middle for now. And that's going to be, in the case of revolute joints, that is the position that the joint anchors, both joint anchors, will initially be placed at. And then we select, or use the spacebar to open the action menu, and then we add joint, and we choose Revolute. So basically up to this point we already looked at this in the video just before. So just to quickly check what that does, we have a body there and it's joined at that point. And then as with other joints we can go to joint mode, select this and move the anchors around. So uh, we already looked at that really, didn't we? So what we want to look at here is how to set the limits for a revolute joint. And that's done by using, well, one way we could do it is by using the properties here. And we could say enable limit is the first thing we should do. And we can see when we click enable limit, we get this little these two little yellow sticks uh, and one green stick showing here they're all right on top of each other at the moment so it's a little bit hard to see but that's because they are uh, the lower limit and the upper limit are both zero degrees so if we run this we should see we can actually move this because the limits are in the same place and there's nowhere to move to so let's try manually setting these. We could make the lower limit uh, minus 30 degrees and the upper limit positive 30 degrees. And we can see when we do that the, the yellow lines here have changed. And what that shows us is the limit positions for this joint. So let's run that again. Now we can see that we can actually move it because we have a, a range to move between and we have a little green line in between these limit points which shows us the current joint angle so this is the value that you would get if you were when you're programming using box 2d and you did um, get joint angle I think it is maybe that's the function uh, this is the result that you would get from that so when we're at uh, this would be minus 30 degrees and positive 30 degrees because these degrees are relative to body A. That's the result you would get is that green line. And that green line there is also shown in the editor view. So in this position we are right in the middle of the span. And you can see uh, it's a little bit tricky because when I mouse over the blue dash line shows up but there's a sort of a semicircle line shown between these two joint limits to show us um, which side of these is actually active. Okay, um, so that's setting the joint limits manually by editing the properties here. Now we can also do it visually which is probably the more common way that you will do it and that is done by First we select the joint and then we hit the L key, L for limit, and I'll just hit the L key and we see what we get here. So that's showing us, uh, and just one more time I'll remind you that if you get confused with what's happening here, you can hit the uh, uh, F9 key to show, us, show you the context help. And we can see here we are moving the position of the lower limit and
then if we hit L again now we are changing the position of the upper limit and we can use the left mouse button to set the new position or escape to cancel so just if you ever get stuck remember that that uh, extra information is there so if I keep hitting L like this the L key will switch between setting the upper limit and the lower limit and if I hit escape then I'm back to just the regular selection mode Another way you can, um, oops, never mind. Um, so let's try setting the lower limit, and we'll move the lower limit right down to round about here where the the back side of the B is horizontal, and I'll click the left mouse button there. Now you didn't see anything move because all we were doing is setting the the joint limit so the body doesn't move but what did change is this little yellow marker here so now we can see that we have a larger range because the, uh, the joint limit has been changed so if we run this now we can see the body can go right down to the position that we set as the lower limit and of course if we want to set the upper limit uh, the upper limit is this one. Now if I move the mouse I can rotate and let's make the upper limit uh, let's make the upper limit way over here like that. Now we can see that the semicircle is going f all the way around to there so that's the new upper limit and if we run that we should see that we can pull this body all the way over to there. So that's uh, joint limits and they are done with the L key. Um, one more thing that Revolut joints have that's specific to them is this motor here and we can set, uh, well we first need to enable it and we need to give it some kind of a, a torque and if the motor speed is zero, let's run that. Run. Okay, so it's using the torque to try and stop the body from rotating like that. So it's just a, it's acting like a brake in this situation. Uh, if we actually gave it a motor speed, so let's say ooh, the torque was a little bit weak too. So let's make it a thousand and we will make the motor speed minus uh, 20 degrees per second so that's oh sorry now we want it to be positive don't we so a positive angle is counterclockwise in box 2D alright let's run that and now we can see that the motor is pushing that joint around in the counterclockwise direction until it gets to the limit so if I drag this down to the bottom, let it go. That's how this motor works. So once again it's just kind of handy to be able to change things and quickly see what that change would do in your program when you run it. And I think that's about all we need to look at for Revolut joints. Okay, we'll see you next time.